Hello and welcome to another episode of Laying Down the Lore of the Old World, a lore podcast in which we aim to separate our ghouls from our goblins, our snotlings from our skaven storm fiends, and our bloodthirsters from our bloodletters, and generally ask, what's up with this Warhammer stuff? My name is Ben Crone Barber and I know pretty much fuck all about Warhammer. With me is my co-host Christopher Crallen Allen. I'm here, hi. Who knows absolutely fuck all about Warhammer. Zero. Nothing. And my dear brother Darren. Traditional hello. Who knows so much about Warhammer, it's a wonder he has time to do anything else. After gathering online to slay some vermin in the name of Sigmar, this dichotomy between our levels of understanding became clear, and this series is an attempt to address that ignorance. Ignorance. Oh, hurrah. Racist. What? Oh, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, my yeah, my um, my posh, my posh, my tough English sounded weirdly Chinese there. I'm not sure why I went into that. <laughs> oh, oh, no, sorry, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Don't do it again. That's like yeah, no, no, I'm stop. not going to repeat it. Like, <laughs> Next, you'll be singing a song about loneliness. Hmm. I was yeah, I was going for the old uh, Irish adage of uh, if two wrongs don't make a right, try three. Um, but, was it that uh, <laughs> uh, the, the comedian Tommy Tiernan says is he racist or is he having the crack <laughs> <laughs> uh, right before we go on quick thank you to everyone who supports the show you guys are the tits uh, if you do want to support the show uh, you can click on the Patreon link in the description and sign up today join our discord for as little as three pounds three pounds is really it's really fuck all Crow, what could you buy for three pounds Maybe a paperclip, perhaps. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe half a paperclip. Yeah, scoff, or yeah. you could join the Discord and, and have have the crack. Yeah, man. Is it crack? Is it racist? We don't know. Uh, now, for an extra two pounds, <laughs> we'll let you decide. On, <laughs> we'll let you decide. You can come on and tell us what you think about that comment. <laughs> for an extra two pounds on Patreon, you can gain access to the full back catalogue of our bonus series, Chunks of Dar. Dar, how do you feel about Chunks of Dar in one word? xenophobic <laughs> okay great no. yeah this yeah. is uh... um, charming charming okay, okay yeah charming charmingly xenophobic xenophobically charming if you are keen to support the show but you don't want to subscribe totally get it that's fine we don't hate you uh there are other ways you can do that just click on the support we didn't want you to join anyway <laughs> we just want your money yeah. um, <laughs> click on the support link in the description where you'll find links to our affiliates and other support platforms now oh yeah yeah so we're not for you are we no 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 you're not for us <laughs> <laughs> have them apples <gasps> Crowley yo you know what time it is oh yeah hello Reitland it's time for Sarat's every recap everybody's favorite part of the show it was all about the heroes and heroisms of the high elves prince imric crown prince of calador and lord of dragons who had a mighty bunch of responsibilities you know only in charge of the whole of the orthon kingdom as well as the fucking dragons wow <laughs> jesus blimey right the um hero turned dickhead Caradrian, was that the one? Caradrian of the Flame? He was an absolute douche monkey to begin with. That's Wasn't right. it? Wouldn't he be dickhead turned hero? Because a hero turned dickhead, isn't that like the other way around? <laughs> like he was a hero and then he was As soon as I said it, I thought, I don't know if I'm saying this. <laughs> I'm still right getting now. past the bit that there's monkey you douches. I mean? <laughs> monkey douche. Yeah. Well, Caradrian was one. <laughs> That's all you okay. need to know, Darren. But then so, he wasn't. He was real cool. He was humbled as fuck. Yeah. Got this got the rune stamped onto his forehead against yeah. his will. Which I have a question about elves and runes, but anyway, I'll save that for chunks of Dart here too, Patreon only. There nice, was nice. Corhill, the hunter captain of the White Lines of Shrace, who was a charming motherfucker. You know, he could be <laughs> friendly. <anybody. laughs> there was uh, this kind of air of kind of weirdness about him, and yeah, he was nice. But he was still Corhill, do you know what I mean? Unmistakably Corhill kind of thing. <laughs> which um, I, 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 which episode? You've just created an additional layer to that character. I can no, tell you, you, you look at it, Dar's face, and he's like, that may be the isopropyl alcohol that he's just inadvertently <laughs> sniffed off on. of something in his near... Oh, yeah, he's taking, <laughs> <it>. he's taking <laughs> I'm just listening. If you swap out Corhill for the name Kral, it's, it means the same. Kralhill. Hill. <laughs> 
Crowell. 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 That's who he sees himself. <laughs> <laughs> are, ben, are you, are you suggesting that that what I'm saying is wrong? Am I am I incorrect? I mean, I thought he was just a. I thought he he was just an absolute G, and everybody loved him, and he was always putting yeah. himself out there. Yeah. That was it. There was no. There was no he's also high off. He's also you said high. No, no, but, weirdness yeah. about him. But, okay, maybe I'm. I didn't describe that right. But Darren Projecting. explained core hill. Jealous. Chris is jealous. <laughs> what, what? <It's>, wait, <laughs> I know what this is. It's just Chris's hatred of the elves. If Chris describes any elf, there's just an additional layer of you know just weirdness about. <laughs> that them, goes like. without saying. That goes without saying. <laughs> well, but don't it say it. Mean then. I'm wrong. <laughs> Right, Corhill, Crowhill, whatever you want to call him or them. <laughs> Darren described him as you know very nice, very kind of uh, uh, amicable, and got on with everyone. But he was also unique. You know, he was also a bit of an outsider inherently. Right, Darren, that's what you're saying. True. Yes. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Shut up, Ben. Yeah, Ben. Sit down. Right. Get out. Yeah. What's that about? Out. Leaving. Leaving. Shutting up. <laughs> that's it. Exactly. Uh. And then Alith Anal, the Shadow King, Prince of Nagareth, who stole a steaming brooch from Marathi. Is that right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My man. Just, just gave her a little slap on the ass as he left. He Wink penetrated time. her special area, stole the brooch, and just... Uh, during, a, uh, during a dance in the court, because his dark elf facade was so convincing, he managed to get in there and actually dance with Marathi. It makes me think, what kind of dance, what kind of event was it? Was it like a real... The merengue! down, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like flow rider playing in the black ground. <laughs> black ground? <Yeah>. Background. <laughs> the black ground. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, it was the Oil Baron's Ball. It was like a live jazz band. Um, oh, mate. And there was, there was just opulence and disgusting do you know what it was everywhere. It was the Moss Eisley Cantina tune, just on repeat. Play that same song. And then there was a uh, one we just mentioned. It was the one of the few high elves that actually inspired fear in the Dark Elves, and I don't know his name because it's not here. Yeah, it's um, Alathanar. I, the magical brooch allows him to terrify Dark Elves. Boo. And wasn't the brooch powered by a small diesel engine? Yes. Yeah. A yeah. four stroke, yeah. <laughs> we just, uh, oh, that, oh, that's just my uh, my miniature diesel engine, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not a lot of initial power, but great talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said suavely. <laughs> Interestingly, that's the uh, the leading prompt on my uh, dating profile. <laughs> Not very powerful, but great talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, takes me a while to get going, baby, but I'm um, yeah. <laughs> Really? Why am I imagining that you, the music you have uh, on in the background during ro romance times is you spin me right round, baby, right round? <laughs> That's a great idea. Ben's it's actually the Moss Eisley Cantina tune on repeat. <laughs> Ben's done his best work to that. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's distracting enough that I can, you know, anyway. <laughs> Well, just for general uh, reference, my favorite music on in the background is the wedding present song, Take Me. Listen to it. I dare you. <laughs> You'll never listen to it to the same again. <laughs> Certainly, it's a, te it's a hip grinding tempo. Wow. How's it? Is it a twerker? That's, uh, <laughs> that's really, uh, that's uh, really set the tone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so speaking of continuing the tone, if you recall, we did the uh, the AI intro, the AI script. Oh yeah. So I've asked them to uh, do another. Do another. One, oh, to God. do another. I'll just do the intro, but I've asked it to do it in a sarcastic tone. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so <laughs> here we go, great. as as yeah. best I can. Let me take notes. <laughs> here we go. Well, 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 lore aficionados, <laughs> brace yourselves for another riveting episode of Laying Down the Lore. I'm your oh-so-thrilled host, on the insert name here, and today we're diving headfirst into the very fascinating world of Warhammer, <laughs> specifically focusing on the epic tales of High Elf Heroes. <laughs> so grab your pointy ears and let's roll our eyes together as we uncover the oh so glorious stories of, <laughs> of Eltharion Elthar the Grim and those stupid twins, Tyrion and Teclis. 
<laughs> that was Mate, beautiful. I, um, I I quit. Like I quit. Just get that guy on. <laughs> I just thought it was amazing at the start. Well, well, well. <laughs> 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 oh, <dear. laughs> so uh, I'll be taking suggestions, uh, dear friends, as to the tone in which the next AI <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> intro yes, will be it. done. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, sarcasm. Uh, impatient will be the next <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just the word go in a, and an exclamation yeah. point. Yeah. So as our sarcastic friend intimated, this is the second of two episodes on high elf heroes and we shall focus on the kind of big three that see a lot of both use in the lore but also on the tabletop we're going to start with eltharian the grim who is the warden of barry or vris whose warden father was charioted to death if you recall vibro elf vibro elf yes mm. in terms of Birth, early history, there's none of that nonsense. Eltharion was sort of leapt fully formed from the lore and was really first kind of detailed in the fourth edition of Warhammer and uh, appeared in a cardboard cutout form in the boxed edition for, was it the fourth? I think it was the fourth. So there was just a... a picture on a bit of card of an elf on a uh, on a griffin that you could kind of jab in an upright and move it around the battlefield <laughs> wow. have you ever seen the video of a newscaster discussing a bear rampaging through someone's back garden and no. um, in, in this well i'll see if i can find a link for it for the show notes but in the in the video, they go, and the bear uh, moved through the garden, something like this. And then they had the sound man holding a giant cutout of a bear and just moving it, <laughs> bobbling it back and forth across the garden. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, so this Vis- like, cardboard cutout, was this in an official Games Workshop release? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What? It was a little, <laughs> a, a little kind of card picture. Uh, and you had one that was... Eltharion on his griffin Stormwing, and you had another that was Grom the Paunch in his chariot. And you kind of wow. shadow played them or shadow puffed them on the battlefield. Uh, and <laughs> you also had actual miniatures. You had high elf archers and spearmen versus goblin archers. But they weren't as good. As well. But they weren't as yeah. good. You couldn't frisbee them at people's heads. <laughs> Look, the griffin flies. <laughs> you could wobble them across the line. <laughs> So we have discussed Eltharion previously, and we've looked at his kind of the battle, the siege of Ivris, the siege of Barry, against Grom the Paunch, who we've covered at length in the uh, Greenskin episode. So we, we will touch upon this battle again, but really not in as much detail as we've done before. Because you should have been paying attention. Stabbing. What well, are we just Done. wasting our time doing this? What's going on? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Susan. Um, so, uh, <laughs> oh, fucking Susan. Uh, but we'll also cover again the kind of his confusing fate when battling the, the Dark Elves. But really, that's where we'll start. He launched or he led a high elf fleet against the forces of the Dark Elves as a young elf. And during the kind of battles of that campaign, he was stabbed, which is not unusual in a battle, I feel, but he was unusually stabbed by a dark elf. <laughs> Even as I'm saying this, I'm wondering, how are you unusually stabbed? Was the, yeah. was the character <laughs> in question unusual? Was, it, uh, was he stabbed with a plate? Because that would that be, would be unusual, unusual stabbing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah, yeah. So he, okay. uh, <laughs> he was stabbed with a hacky sack. <laughs> he, was, he was in battle and he was sliced, let's say, by a frisbeed cardboard cutout of himself, <laughs> which had been dipped in venom. Uh, and so, yeah, a dark elf assassin stabbed him 
while while not fatally, uh, certainly enough to get some poison in his system, and his uh, companions dragged him from the field uh, as he was fading. So the high elf army retreated back to their ships, or back to their bases on the coast of Nagroth, where he fell into a kind of an in between state. He's body was still trying to heal itself and process the poison, but his mind had gone into almost like a, an elven afterlife, a waiting room. Uh, so My mind is telling me no, but my body, <laughs> my body. Do you think <laughs> quoting a urinating paedophile is a good move on this podcast? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where that line came from, so I'm pleading ignorance. That's R. It's Kelly. R. Kelly. <laughs> you can't say that word, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm saying the R word. R word, Kelly. R word, Kelly. <laughs> 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 in this dream state, he was visited by his father, uh, Fa- Morani. Father! Father! <laughs> <laughs> we, should, uh, we should do that all uh, in sync the next time that happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, this is where I'm now going to have to go through the entire podcast without mentioning the F word. Um, so, <laughs> as he was uh, effectively fighting for his life in this fevered, poisoned state, he was visited by the ghost of his father, father, the <laughs> kind of high elf prince or high elf king Moranian, uh, who was the uh, ruler of uh, Ivris, aka or uh, maiden name Barry, and um, he. In this conversation, Eltharion came to realize that his father was in fact dead, having been vibrated to death on the front of Grom the Paunch's chariot. Sorry, he didn't know until this point. It was happening relatively at the same time then, was it? This, yes, exactly right. right. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> if- Sorry, I've, I've got to say it. So, like, you know, when people die, and I don't know, you, you see the ghosts, their apparitions, is it of the moment they died? So was he just talking to him <laughs> like this in his dream? It's like, Father, what's wrong with you? He's like, son, I've got something to tell you. <laughs> yeah, you do not want to know where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> if the Tower of Hoeth gives you vibrating pleasure eggs, don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to be remembered. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it was the, the ghost of this noble high elf who was completely still except for his hand with a goblet of wine going <laughs> <laughs> so his father's the spirit of his father, father explained <laughs> what was happening to his kingdom cause uh, uh, or because at that time the siege of Tor Yvris was ongoing Listeners will recall that Grom the Paunch and his homicidal shaman sidekick had taken over that area of Ulthuin and was attempting to topple many of the waystones in and around that area to disrupt the power of chaos or the to disrupt the great vortex that was draining chaos out of the world. Eltharian's lieutenants arrived the next morning to find the young prince up and around, still looking very pale, but he was past the danger point, and he immediately set out, or rather, he ordered his army to immediately get back on their ships and uh, head back to Ulthuin, and he took wing on his griffin, uh, Stormwing. So as They arrived in Ulthuin. They landed uh, in a place that you may have heard of, which is quite liony, quite a few lions in around that area. Uh, And so they uh, made landfall there and uh, deposited the army while the navy went around the the outer kingdoms. And they were going to capture in uh, or capture Grom the Paunch in what I like to call a pincer maneuver. Because because that's what it's fucking mm. called. It's a, it's, uh, a good, it's a good term. So Eltharion was uh, flying ahead of his force. And you'll recall 
uh, from our description of the Battle of Tory Rees that Eltharion arrived at the battle and targeted Grom immediately and landed like a thunderbolt into the uh, midst of the battle uh, and belly flopped. Belly flop. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> he, he belly flopped and he got off and he was just holding his chest and he had one hand up going, just, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. <laughs> give me a minute. Even the enemies are like in you, like, ooh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the resounding sound of a belly flop. It's not the flop ooh. itself, it's everyone's reaction. It's like, Ooh, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's smart. Oh, I felt that. I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> and so the battle began to unfold as the forces of Eltharion and a huge contingent of warriors from the kingdom of Safri, as they had realized due to Eltharion's father's warning that the Waystones were uh, being targeted, the Waystones were in danger. So as Eltharion and his army marched through uh, Shreis into Safri, he was able to uh, gain great alliances and information from the lower masters of the High Tower, of the White Tower, who, of course... Howith. Howith, yes who are charged, really, one of their duties is to make sure that the Great Vortex is still going. And so... Just keep spinning that plate. Yep, with that music. And so once the the High Elf army arrived at Tor Ivris, they began a kind of meat cruncher action, a meat grinder battle. And very slowly, the uh, goblin forces were eroded, and ultimately they broke and ran uh, with the with the disappearance of Grom the Paunch. As we'll recall, there's very few actual deaths of named characters. That's right. In yeah. uh, in Warhammer, they tend to just disappear. What did you uh, call that? You, I think you used the expression "plot armor." To plot armor. That. Yeah. Plot armor is the kind of uh, narrative importance of the hero in question, and thus they're always just escaping death. Right. If they're poisoned, they're healed really quickly. Right. Any right, right. kind of attack on them is mysteriously or, you know, uh, less mysteriously evaded or avoided. Coincidentally, uh, conveniently. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But they, yeah, they yeah. always seem to just escape with minor injuries or a scratch. So in a, in a kind of narrative sense, it's they, they are important to the plot of the story right. uh, and thus cool. uh, are they're just lucky. narratively like, armour. They're just lucky. So, uh, yes, ultimately, Eltharion the Grim defeats the forces of Grom the Paunch, saves his kingdom as haggard and as battle-worn as it is and begins the process of uh, resetting or, or repairing the hundreds of waystones uh, in and around uh, Wee Greece. stones. Wee no waystones. In terms of his uh, arms and armor, he's really very well armored, like in, in traditional kind of heavy armor. But he, he does have a couple of ridiculous aspects uh, which haven't really changed at all in the lore as it's uh, progressed through. The first is he double wields a spear and a sword. Usually it's like two hand weapons, but this is in one hand he has a huge sword and in the other hand he has a huge spear. So really, how does that work in battle? Yeah. And he just kind of looks at them cluelessly. Yeah, he looks at them cluelessly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> slice or jab? Uh, yeah. Mm, jab or slice? Slice or jab? <laughs> does that not make him like quite effective at close range and quite effective at sort of mid range? I mid -range suppose it being makes anything him, it, that's not ranged, so to, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. You sort of have to attack from like if you're if you're mounted on a griffin, you attack from you know a little bit further away. Uh, so yep. I suspect the fear is the the fear. The spear is used for fighting. A fighting spear, a fear, a is used for um, <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> for uh, fighting against enemies when he's mounted, and then 
the the fang sword. sword, the great sword of Eltharion, is is used uh, up close and personal. And he, he gets off the griffin and he says to the griffin, "Like you, you hold on to this for me. I just yeah. need to, I need to get into some sword action, and I can't, you know." And so. the griffin's like, "But I don't have opposable thumbs." <laughs> He's like, "Okay, well, just stick it in your wellies." <laughs> you and your are you Griffin imagining wellies, that he's got wellies on his back feet oh, I was just trying to see whether you would remember you did well done it's fine we can move on we don't need to get <laughs> you can't unremember the comments like that Ben Jesus yeah we've and just to reiterate because appear, apparently we need to reiterate it we are 100% against Griffin sodomy Gr- Griffin buggery <laughs> I'm not against it and, just because it's a funny word and I want to say it <laughs> are you you all right, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Griffin buggery. It sounds like an old time name for like a a wing in a castle. It's in the Griffin buggery. It sounds like a... <laughs> the you find it in the like, Griffin buggery. It's like the name of an old old wooden ship. <laughs> <laughs> it actually sounds like a craft beer. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like all of those totally. things. <laughs> Fucking pretentious London craft beer. Like. <laughs> I'll have a pint of Griffin buggery, please. <laughs> and could you just get the uh, get the uh, just take the head off? No, I've gone somewhere else with that. Uh, no, just, yeah, no, served no, in a no, welly. No, no. So anyway, yeah. So Eltharion in a welly <laughs> with a straw, please. <laughs> with a and, and you're given the welly and a spear. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hold the spear while drinking from the welly. Yeah, you, know, you can. You get chucked out otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another one called Moran- Moranian's Malice. Which serves you in a regular glass, but you just have to, to shake. <laughs> you have to stand on a vibrating plate. <laughs> High elves, no air. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, uh. So, 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 in terms of the, the the other kind of thing that makes him a bit of a ridiculous figure is the uh, his the helm of Avris of Avris is this large kind of silver pointy helmet with two huge wings coming out at least uh, like two foot either side <laughs> so as we've discussed a few episodes past Eltharian's fate has went through a sort of retconning procedure where he originally attacked Nagaroth again and was returned or returned kind of with a pyrrhic victory but then that was changed to he went to nagroth his entire army was massacred and he was blinded by the witch king himself and he returned and went into a kind of hermitage in the white tower and he became this kind of blind swords master of hoeth uh, for which there was even a miniature it, a regular miniature not a cardboard cut out and he was absolutely shit. He couldn't yeah. see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maiming his own friends and allies. Oh, yeah. Put the fucking sword down. <laughs> In terms of his kind of current effectiveness, he is the king, in quotes, the, the prince of Ivris, and he heads up quite a few armies on behalf of the phoenix king and indeed the forces of his own kingdom so he's known as eltharian the grim and that's pretty much down to the fact that he uh, the the his demeanor changed that night he met his the ghost of his father father uh, and uh, <laughs> father? He, he went from uh, a rather driven and and focused elf to just a being that constantly thinks about war. Yeah, he, he's dealing with some uh, major PTS was names. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Fucked up. But a great kind of uh, figure to have on the tabletop, a great kind of almost seminal hero in the high elf lore, and, you know, is really good in two or 3D. There we go. Lovely. Is there, um, Great. Is there a current miniature? Are the, are the mi- miniatures for Eltharian the Grim and Eltharian the Blind different? And are they both still available? Are there miniatures? They are both different. One is mounted on Stormwing. So one's there with the ridiculous helm, the spear, the sword, 
and a griffin. And the other is a kind of uh, sleek looking blind Rus- Rutger Hauer esque sword master. And so an cool. infantry figure. Eltharian is one of the few elf characters that made it from the old world to the Age of Sigmar. And oh. so there is a character referred to as the Light of Eltharian in the, the kind of high elf equivalent of Age of Sigmar. And he is, in fact, represented as a, just a suit of armor. So he is, he is a, he's effectively a being made of pure light in a suit of armor and wields a couple of blades to uh, go into battle. But Difficult miniature a, to make that one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they've done it really well because there is, there is no physical body there. It is just a, a suit of armor. And the way they've sculpted it and the way they've posed it together with the kind of robes that flow around uh, it that's means clever. that there's an entire, an entire being there representative of, of an entire being. But yeah. But that's another IP that we're not covering at the minute. So, and and uh, well, <laughs> just before we completely stop that, is it, it was his transition into that kind of next world, an ethereal transition? Did he essentially did his physical presence die in the old world? Every yes, everyone's physical presence died, with one exception, I think. But right. their spirits, some of the characters are so strong that their spirit manifested back into the kind of realms of the Age of Sigmar. The only right. being so far that I know of who is the same being as they were. There's no difference. They, they literally, it's Gotrek, the dwarven slayer. He ah. went from, so spoilers, he went from the last battle of the end times. He managed to get into a portal into the realms of chaos and then came out, you know, either millions, thousands, or hundreds of years later, depending on which kind of um, uh, lore, lore uh, which faction you look at. But uh, yeah, so he's exactly the same dwarven slayer, although he's he's gone a little bit loony from constantly having to fight in the realms of chaos for an amount of time. Wow. Groovy. Yeah. Groovy. Groovy. Are we all sold on Anarian the Blind over Anarian the Grim? Are we No, I think we're all sold on Eltharian the Blind over That's... Eltharian the Grim. <laughs> Look, wh- whatever a name I say, you know which one I'm talking about. Because they all sound <laughs> the fucking same. But yeah, are we saying the blind over the grim? Are we are we in agreement that the blind? I I think I think narratively, blind over grim is better. Yeah. But yeah. for a war game where you want a centerpiece miniature kind of to lead your army, grim over blind is kind of more satisfying because you yeah. know you get a griffin. And we all know we love a griffin. Shush, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Hand me my craft beer. Um, <laughs> and me my beer spear. <laughs> spear. Yeah, that's a terrible nickname. You wouldn't want that, would you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beer spear. Oh, sorry, I've got a case of beer spear. <laughs> <laughs> a whole case. I've gone from Eltharian the Grim to Eltharian the Sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Low cost hero ninja frisbee cardboard cutout knockoffs. Low cost hero ninja frisbee cardboard cutout knockoffs. Low cost hero ninja frisbee cardboard cutout knockoffs. Hi, I'm Skinflint Harrington of Skinflint Harrington's Low cost hero ninja frisbee cardboard cutout knockoffs, Dock House and Bazaar. Due to existing mold technology and some poor life decisions, I am currently overstocked on low cost hero ninja frisbee cardboard cutout knockoffs, and they are just waiting to cheapen your gaming experience by telling onlookers, hey everyone, this funny bugger can't afford real miniatures. Your fans will cringe so hard they'll bleed when they see you field such favorites as Grom the Puncho, Shmarian the Grime, and everyone's favorite, Moody Elf in oversized clothes brandishing more weapons than he can use. Most of this stuff is only good for throwing at your enemies like shurikens, and until it goes, it's a massive disappointment. So please, come see me round the back of the doghouse in Mordheim. Look for the Moody Elf out front. I thought we'd close out with a kind of larger-than-life narrative concerning the two greatest heroes of the High Elves currently. Kral and Ben? 
Yep. Oh. The twins, okay. Kral and Bane. Inca, a <laughs> Tyrion, and Techless. Excellent. <laughs> you can be Techless, Chris, because you're kind of Techless in your nature. Well, I, I don't know these characters, so I was going to wait until we heard the story yeah, and then decide we who's who. No, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. Techless sounds enough like Tackless that I'm pretty certain that that's you. Also, sure. to be fair, Techless is kind of small and Asian. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so these twins, uh, basically two of them, yes, twins, Tyrion and Techless. Tyrion... Not a dwarf in a very kind of brutal TV show, is in fact a high elf prince, uh, as is his brother Teclis. They are the descendants of Anarian. So these are the living descendants through a very kind of strangled route, but the bloodline is uh, true enough and has uh, kind of blessed and cursed the pair throughout their lives. Born and growing up in the court of the Ever Queen in the kingdom of Avalorn. They were raised there uh, until reaching uh, maturity. And unfortunately, it was during this process that they first kind of were presented with the curse of Anarion, the curse of the Widowmaker and the, you know, the Blade of Cain that cursed the Phoenix Kings or the first Phoenix Kings bloodline. They were hunted by the greater demon of Slaanesh, Nakari, if you'll recall, Nakari was one of the four greater demons that Anarian had to uh, best round one to allow yep. Kralador the first to be able to uh, create the great vortex. And this keeper of secrets, this kind of bullheaded, four-armed monstrosity, um, Goro, <laughs> <laughs> wanted to um, uh, wipe Anarian's bloodline from the universe. But this, you know, this was only part of the curse, uh, having this nemesis. And the other part was how it represented physically on the, uh, or physically and mentally, on the twins. Tyrion is a supreme warrior, arguably better even than Anarion was at the height of his power in terms of his capacity, not just to win battles, but also his mind in terms of tactics and uh, strategy. He is a supreme warrior and uh, general, but is also an anger-driven asshole. So if anything goes against his will, really, instead of processing it properly and trying to understand how if it could be if there's a compromise or if it could be folded into his existing plan, he just wants to attack. And, you know, thus, if you can provoke him into rashness, you're guaranteed to be able to manage any kind of issue that you may have with him. So wow. he's, he's a very forward character. He's like a very forward thinking uh, character given over to moments of brutality and cruelty and very it's much. You're, you're describing Kral. <laughs> yeah. Brutal is my middle name. Okay, we'll move on. Um, <laughs> this is mirrored then by his twin brother, Teclis, who is a supreme mage and lore master, eventually rising to the great height of being the kind of high lord master of the White Tower. He is a fantastic spellcaster, arguably better than uh, Kalidor I in terms of uh, capacity and power. Fancy. But his curse presents itself as a kind of physicality. He is physically weak and sickly. And wow. so very much, if you've ever read the Elric novels by Michael Moorcock, that it's, he's that kind of character. Very cerebral. Very, Always coughing. <laughs> yeah, very powerful. Yeah. Uh, but always walking around with a bit of a runny nose. He's yeah. constantly got COVID uh, yeah, and yeah, rickets. Yeah. Yeah. And rickets. <laughs> yeah. Great combination. My sinuses. No, sorry, <laughs> yeah. I can't. No, my sinuses are really <laughs> suffering. Yeah, no, no. And of course, also my rickets. Yes, yeah, my rickets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the set. Oh, you've got a cat? No, I can't go in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Old bandy leg techless. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of this, he's a fruitarian. Uh, he only <laughs> eats food that he believes has died naturally. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do they get on? 
for the most part, yes. Um, Do they recent... get it on? <laughs> I mean, it's a fair question. It's a fair question. <laughs> and I, I mean, demand I've an asked, answer. <laughs> I've asked Ben this already. I'm going to ask you, Chris. Are you all right, Chris? <laughs> He's not. No, I I'm half left, mate. <laughs> Do they fight together? Do they do they hang out together? Do you know what's the crack? They have done in the past, uh, but the, as you know, as life progresses, they grow further and further apart. Although they okay. still have this kind of uh, connection, sexual um, connection. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> so it's your own time you're wasting, mate. It's your own time you're wasting. I know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> we rejoin them after this kind of weird and deeply disturbing uh, segue <laughs> as they flee from the greater demon Nakari who has re-emerged to cleanse the world of the bloodline of Anarian and so they disappear into the woods uh, and when I say they I mean Tyrion and Alariel who is now the current uh, Everqueen um, Everqueen that's right I couldn't think of the word that's weird yeah. It's fine. Um, so they disappear into the woods, pursued by Nakari and the forces of Sanesh, uh, as these kind of weird, overtly sexual demons and monsters penetrate deep into the heart, the supple, beating heart of the pulsating woods of Avalorn. Oh. Oh. Wow, we <laughs> Dan's got a Wow-wee. hot flush. <laughs> It's the it's the it's the it's the men of Porsche. That's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> they are effectively moments away from death for nearly forty eight hours, which let's face it, must be exhausting. And as they are fleeing through the woods, the forces of chaos get closer and closer, and eventually they are confronted by Nakari itself. Herself, itself, his self, they self, who knows? And this is where the kind of blade mastery of Tyrion uh, leaps to the fore as he begins an epic sword fight, much like I suspect if you've ever seen the movie Willow, it's the sword yes. fight that Mad Mardigan has against the two headed lizard monster thing. It's that yeah. level of fun. I mean, epicness. Yeah. And so blows are, are, are thrown and caught and thrown back multiple times till eventually it appears that Nakari is looming over Tyrion, both aroused and enraged. Engorged. He's engorged. It looks like Tyrion is in for a bit of griffin buggery before he passes out of this world. Uh, When suddenly bolts of lightning, bolts I say, hit Nakari in in what counts as their chest and they are blown back and they are ungorged? Is that a word? Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and let me guess, you just in the background you hear this like my sinuses, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like techless. <laughs> oh, please don't say my name too loud. <laughs> I have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happened? Uh, yes, it was basically techless. Techless came to the rescue. And, hey! uh, <laughs> he very much kind of uh, in a sickly John Wick, John Sick, uh, blasts <laughs> uh, lightning bolts towards the forces of chaos and eventually they're able to escape from the um the what's names the uh, forest I've, got, I've just switched off i've just shut the down forest. i don't know the what forest. it is it was the forest against the the forces of chaos it should be noted though that it's not only the forces of chaos that are involved in this kind of long string of battle the forces of malekith are going hand in fist, um, if you'll excuse the phrase, uh, with the forces of Sanesh. And in fact, the previous Ever Queen was killed by Urian Poison Blade. Again, a name that's a bit on the nose for a Dark Elf assassin. And so it seems that Malekith is in cahoots with the forces of Sanesh, although really, I suspect, if we go back over the past few episodes, it's... Um, that's no surprise. Yeah, it's uh, Marathi, really, who's in charge mm. of the Cult of Excess and thus uh, links with Slanesh. The Teclis leads the, the twins away from the kind of forest battle and they make their way as best they can to a place called Fanuvio Plain. And it's here where, at the height of the kind of final great invasion of Ulthuin by the forces of Malekith, 
that the two armies of High Elves and Dark Elves meet. This is, if you'll recall, it's happening in conjunction with the Great War Against Chaos in the Old World. So this is where Kislev and the Empire and all the other human nations are trying to stop the forces of chaos from getting into uh, the Empire and wiping out not only the Empire, but all the waystones that are uh, within the Old World itself. So concurrently with that, you're seeing the Dark Elves face off against the High Elves. Now, the High Elves are being aided from afar as best as, as best as possible by the forces of the Lizardmen, by the Slan. And so they're desperately Ooh. trying to keep the Great Vortex going. And so in the Battle of Fenuvial Plain, you have the almost the entirety of the Dark Elf military force arrayed against what's left of the entirety of the High Elf force. So you have on one side... This is the last stand. Yeah, you have on one side a a great dark host of kind of iron-clad, dull-ironed and purple-clad warriors together with all the kind of specialist forces that are within the Dark Elves, like the Witch Elves and Assassins and Beastmasters and so forth. So it's a great host of Dark Elves against the kind of glitteringly white and silver and gold forces of the High Elves. So you have all the Citizen Levy plus Swordmasters from Hoeth plus the uh, Lore Masters from uh, Safri. Safri. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and above all of these forces, you have the dragons, great heroes, <laughs> dragons. griffins, phoenix, dragons, <laughs> griffins, phoenixes, eagles, <laughs> pegasi, magically enchanted uh, parchment airplanes, versus <laughs> the kind of uh, dark pegasi, the dark dragons, the hydras. Uh, and oh. Charybdises of the Dark Elves. I've implied there that Hydras fly. They don't fly. Uh, okay. There are <laughs> numerous beasts, sea beasts and drakes and dragons at the command of the And the did Dark you say Elves. that the Lizardmen are there as well? What, what kind of numbers are we talking? Where, well, n- no f- no physical forces, but it's they're, they're shoring up the magical defences of uh, ah, Othuin and the Isle of the Dead and so forth. Gotcha. So there is a a staggering battle uh, with a, a kind of front line of many miles as these two armies clash together with such force that the it's written that, that several kind of ranks go deaf just from the noise of the two armies smashing together wow and uh, then begins the, a kind of great war of hatred in earnest and while this is happening you've got to kind of envisage Dark Elf assassins leaping from within the ranks into the High Elf ranks to try and kill leaders and standard bearers and uh, anyone else of note. And again, above this, you have Malekith on his great black dragon commanding uh, the forces and then later on... Just flying around. Yeah. Whee! <laughs> yeah, attention to the battle at yeah. all. <laughs> I love the idea that he's commanding it. Like, how? Like, what? The, the, how the fuck like, can they hear him? If there's people down there going deaf, like, the guy, he'd be like, no, 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 right, left on, on the left flank. They were like, what? The semaphore. What's he showing? Yeah. He uses evil semaphore. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> At the heart of this battle, we find our, uh, our twins, Tyrion and Teclis, again defending the Ever Queen. Uh, and at that point, Urian Poisonblade appears as if from nowhere, much like, you know, a ninja, a dark elf ninja. And he stabs Teclis with, again, a a strange blade, poisoned, causing Tyrion to uh, kind of weaken. And they then... Teclis or Tyrion? You've said them both. Oh, sorry, Tyrion, the the fighter one. Tyrion, right. Okay. They engage in a sort of great duel where Urian Poison Blade is uh, kind of gaining the advantage with every blow, if you'll pardon the phrase, and eventually Tyrion stumbles. And at that moment, Urian leaps forward to deal the death blow, but Tyrion kind of does this sneaky shit with his sword. He just goes, meh. And he, the assassin lands on the blade and dies almost instantly. Excellent. Uh, ben. Ben. That's plot armor. 
Armor. <laughs> yeah. You want to see what plot armor was? That's it. Thanks, Crown. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, you know, the armies return to uh, clashing as they had done in a great battle until the Witch King is forced to come down and deal with the situation himself. And as we know, the Witch King is a, a supreme magic user and just bombards the place with dark magic, the winds of, oh, look, Dar, and um, <laughs> it begins to turn the tide once again. And so it's at this stage that Teclis comes to the fore, uh, limping slightly and sniffling, and um, starts bombarding. <laughs> complaining. Complaining and bombarding Malekith with bolts of magical power, which seem to just keep getting stronger. So there's a stalemate at first, but then the power of uh, Teclis uh, seems to grow and become stronger again and again. Uh, and this is the assistance provided by the Slan. And cool. ultimately, <gasps> it shatters the magical wards around the Witch King, who r- realizes he's facing final death summons a portal and he disappears into the realm of chaos um no no crowd no. that's plot armor <laughs> uh, almost immediately afterwards Tyrion, who's on his horse malhandir races forward and takes the head of the personal standard bearer of Malekith, and as the banner of the Witch King falls into the mud of the battlefield, the Dark Elf army breaks, and almost nice. as a, a, a single unit just starts to flee and heads back out, back towards their ships and escapes, and thus ends the Battle of Fenuvial Plain. Mr. Chris. The banner drops. Is that just a psychological thing, or does is the banner like enhanced and actually provide some actual support buffs, whatever you want but, to call it, to the army? Well, or is it I, just I, like, I think. Or is that just the? Is that just the game? It's like the game of war. If your banner falls in the mud, you lose. Well, I think it was give, giving out uh, some sort of magical assistance to the forces of the Dark Elves, and but it also represented the person of the High King, of the yeah. Witch King. So once the Witch King was gone, they would still believe he was there, even though they couldn't see him, because the banner was still there and providing okay. its magical reassurance. But once that fell, once the, the kind of heroic standard bearer was uh, dispatched and the banner fell into the mud. Uh, that was it. There, there seemed to Everything be some was fucked. You know, some the advantage flick of is a gone. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, okay. have you ever have you ever drunk yourself sober? I've yes. done that twice in my life. So it's it's like there's a point where you go, oh, hang on, I'm sober. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> yeah. It's real <laughs> weird. The standard bearer real version of that. Standard bearer version. Yeah. Got so it. we we leave the the battle of Fenuvial Plain. And thus, really, the the larger part of the the story of Tyrion and Teclis in Ulthuin as such. There are more tales to tell, and in fact, we've covered some of them already with uh, Teclis establishing the Colleges of Magic in oh, the yeah. Old World with the assistance of Finrear and Ertl, his two kind of uh, best mates. Finrear and who? Spoopel. Er- Ertl. Oh, Ertl. Y R T L E. Ertl. Ertl the Turtle. <laughs> In the movie, I, fi- I I envisage Ertl being played by Johnny Vegas. <laughs> yeah, uh, nice. Like it. And Tyrion goes on to become, uh, you know, effectively the spirit of Anarion, the kind of standard or the, the cultural center point of uh, high elf civilization in terms of a link to the past. He becomes Anarion. And this image is assisted by the fact that he is wearing the dragon armor of Anarion. He also has what's referred to as the Heart of Avalorn, which is a gift to him by the uh, Alarial the Everqueen, who, spoiler alert, they have a bit of a they have a bit of a oh. old fungi bagel, a finagle. Oh. Uh, and, um, a high-powered, they, steamy affair. Yeah, they <laughs> ultimately go on to give to have a daughter who I really like because she is one of the components needed to 
return a certain someone to the plane of reality who I'm a big fan of. Uh, so oh we'll draw a veil my. there. We'll draw a veil. No. But the, Darity you know, filthy bastard. <laughs> with, much like uh, Alathanar from the previous episode, this has really been just a really cursory look at them in terms of their uh, kind of backstory. Tyrion is a supreme elven leader and becomes absolutely crucial, utterly crucial to the storyline of the end times, which I believe we're going to cover in a separate series. And Teclis, equally so, but also is firmly responsible for establishing the Colleges of Magic, as we've said in the past. Amazing. And we'll cover that in quite a bit more detail when we talk about the Empire. Interesting point, actually, you make there about the end times, because the end times must be a kind of collapse of a lot of that plot armor. Yes. Because for it's everyone. essentially for everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Looking forward to that, man. God damn, I love a conclusion. That's a that's a rollicking ride. It's a real what do they call it? It's a rip roar. A, a, an upper downer, a yo yo. No, a roller roller coaster. coaster. Yeah. <laughs> it's a upper downer, laugher, screamer. <laughs> you name <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Yeah. So yes, so in terms of kind of effectiveness on the battlefield, you're if you're having high elf armor and you have Tyrion there, why isn't he your general? He's well, I he's effectively going to be your general. That's anyway. what I ask. Yeah, every day. Uh, yeah, he's mounted on this uh, amazing kind of white horse and is the most recent incarnation of his miniature. It was kind of bucked up, and he was kind of holding the sword aloft while they were over the dead body of a dark elf. Uh, and so he's uh, uh, quite a striking miniature. Teclis, on the other hand, is an infantry, you know, he's a wizard. He's just a, a guy walking around. He has this staff. With the sniffles. With the sniffles, but this staff makes him physically well. It's, he's ma it's magically empowers his body. So it's sort of cool. staff agra. Viagra staff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. There's a joke that. there. To be nice. Nice. There is a joke somewhere. But uh, yes, as I yeah. say, not exactly the justice they deserve here, but their stories are more to do with the progressing narrative of Warhammer than uh, a kind of one and done thing. Nice. Heroes. Hero. Back. Way. Kral, Tyrion, or Teclis? I'll take the other yeah, one. Yeah, I'll be Teclis. I'll be the, I'll be oh, the, I'll be the sniveling. Teclis. All right, fine, I'll go Tyrion. Okay, I'll be Tyrion. I'll be the blind swordmaster. No, he's Hang not on, Ben. Blind. There's a he's difference between being actually sick and being a hypochondriac. Uh, yeah, oh, he's not a hypochondriac. Okay, oh, I'll go Tyrion then. <laughs> he's actually sick. <laughs> I, I don't know. No, it was Altharian the blind, wasn't it? Excuse yeah, me, yeah. Altharian the blind. That's yeah, right. yeah. I mean, yeah, he was yeah. pretty cool. Um, you, can, you can be Tyrion the blind if you want. We can blind you. I'll blind you because I'm I'll be... techless and I'm... Tagless. And I'm a dick about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome sauce. I am more I I am more of a melee guy, so I'd have to go Tyrion, I'm afraid. You could be snivelly yep. tagless. I'm, I'm more of a shooty lightning bolts from my favorite. You are tips. from afar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks Dara, for asking. I'm Nakari. Uh, yeah, I was going to say there's no one for you to pick because <laughs> there was only two guys. So yeah, you can. Be... I'm a I'm a giant bull-headed sex demon. Please don't put that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure you and are, on Darren. That joyous visual image. <laughs> let us call it a day. All right, that's all from us. Thank you so much for listening. Details and imagery for the topics we've discussed in this podcast can be found on our website at layingdownthelore.com. We also have all our previous episodes on there, release schedules and merchandise. Again, if you're keen to support this podcast, click on the support link in the description and give us all your Spondooly Bing Bong. We'll be back again displaying just how little Chris knows about the snivels. But until then, goodbye. Farewell, goodbye, Alfie Desen and so on. Fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off.